Hello friends, welcome to Insights ICANN Issues. In today's video, we are going to discuss about weekly current issues. And this is going to be the week number 9. That means previously, for the last 8 weeks, we were discussing about current issues. And in case, if you missed out the weekly issues, go and find them in the playlist, where you can find a separate playlist for the weekly issues. And by the way, last week video notes, I am unable to upload, upload in the drive, last week notes and today's video pdf both the pdfs you can find the link in this video description okay meanwhile first we'll see what topics we are going to discuss in this video in this video we are going to discuss about matsya 6000 it is related to snt haisala and shantini Gidan. it is related to a standard gk or current affairs question culture also unesco they got the tags of the unesco world heritage sites then Vishwakarma scheme, it is related to government intervention. And tell me students, which ministry is the nodal ministry for the Vishwakarma scheme? What is the name of the ministry? Then Mithun, it is a gaur, you know like it is a one which buffalo, we can call it as, it gives milk and it is a traditional and cultural significance in northeast. In fact, it is a state animal for few states also. We will discuss. Because it has got some special identity from the, you know like government. Next section 6A of the Citizenship Act, it is related to polity and Supreme Court agreed that they are going to review the constitutional validity of section 6A. This section 6A is exclusively related to Assam, not related to the rest of the India. Next nagorno karabakh conflict it is related to IR and it is a conflict between the Armenian and Azerbaijan and all of you know that Armenian, these forces, separatist forces which are operating in Azerbaijan, they agreed to surrender. In this context, we are going to discuss about this conflict. And Sada Sarova Dam, due to high rainfall, this river Namada is overflowing, which is causing floods under the downstream of the this Sada Sarova Dam. And we will discuss about further details regarding the Sada Sarova Dam. So these are the components we are going to cover in this video. Now let us go to the first one, Matsya 6000. As usually, before we start a particular topic, let me give you a brief overview. Matsya 6000, it is a larger, it is a part of the larger program, Samudrayan. The Samudrayan program is all about exploring the ocean water, regarding the, you know, like uh, biodiversity research, as well as regarding the research on the rare earth minerals. So it is related to the research one. It is not going to affect any biodiversity of the ocean water, I mean, you know, like ocean life. And this operates with lithium ion batteries, and this Matsya 6000 is a vessel name, name of the vessel, same like how we use GSLV and PSLV, like that. It can carry three people into the ocean. These are the details you have to know. And this one is developed by the National Institute of Ocean Technology. And this Samudrayan project is operated by the okay, Ministry of Earth Sciences. These details you have to know. Matsya 6000, first manned mission. And tell me students, which are the countries having this kind of capacity to go up to 6000 meters depth let me know in the comment section india is going to be the sixth country in this regard it can operate up to 12 meters underwater and the maximum 96 hours 96 hours in case of emergency normal duration 12 hours samudrayan mission matsya 6000 manned one developed by national institute of ocean technology and one among the six countries other five countries are Russia, USA and China, Japan and France objectives researching under the under ocean and discovering the rare earth minerals as a part of the India's blue economy policy. You know that blue economy policies are about exploring ocean and how that oceans can be contributed to the economy. You know that students, Portuguese were very great, very much detailed into the blue ocean economy they proposed and this is operated through lithium ion batteries. So India's first manned mission is not going to disturb the ecosystem of the ocean. It is a part of the blue economy policy and it operated by the Ministry of Earth Sciences, Nodal Ministry. Next topic. Next topic is regarding the UNESCO list. You know that so far 42, 4, 2. 42 are the sites or the places are identified by the UNESCO under the category of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Actually, this UNESCO World Heritage Sites according to the UNESCO convention which was made in 1972. If you remember 1972 was the year 
Stockholm Convention was happened, even the Wildlife Protection Act also was made in 1972. And this time, previously 39th was Ramappa, 40 Dolavira, and the 41 Shantini Ketan, and the 42nd Haisala. Here we use the word ensemble. Ensemble means group of structures which can be seen as a part of one identity. Here we are discussing about Hoysala's structure which is present in three areas. All these three comes under the Hoysala's architecture. If you remember Hoysala's as well as Yadavas and Kakatiyas and Pandyas, all these are the contemporary rulers that you have to remember. And tell me students, what is the capital city of Hoysala kingdom? Anyhow, I will tell you. Meanwhile, put your answer in the comments. And Shantini Ketan is also identified as UNESCO World Heritage Site. Shantini Ketan was established in 1901 and it became university in 1921. And the chancellor of the this Vishwabharati University, who acts as a chancellor? Prime Minister acts as chancellor. And out of these 42 sites, out of these 42 sites, these 35 sites are the cultural one and the and 34 one is the cultural one, 7 is the natural one, 1 is a mixed site. That mixed site is Kanchenjunga National Park, which is present in Sikkim. Let us see. Haisalas present in this Karnataka ensembles three structures which are present in Belur, Halibeli, Halibich, and Somnathpura. They got UNESCO heritage list. And these are related to Hoysalas. Hoysalas mainly, you know, like they got prominent into 10th century, and these architectures are believed to be built during the 12th and 13th centuries. And these were founded by King Nupakama. They came, they rose to prominence in 10th century, capital Dwarasamudra and the modern day Halibeju. Later it shifted to Belur. You know that Belur Mutt is very popular with respect to Ramakrishna mission. And these Hoysalas, they followed both Vaishnavism and Shaivism. Contrary to majority of the rulers who followed either the Vaishnavism or Shaivism. Shantini Ketan, related to Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore. And Rabindranath Tagore was the first non-European to get Nobel Prize in Literature. That also you have to remember. UNESCO World Heritage Sites, present in West Bengal, established in 1901. In 1921, it upgraded to university named as Vishwabharati University. Who acts as chancellor? Sorry, vice chancellor? No, chancellor. Prime Minister act as a chancellor. And this UNESCO World Heritage Sites. They will be identified according to the convention which was made in 1972. It is having three categories cultural, natural, both means mixed one. So far in India, 42 sites identified. 42 sites identified. Out of that, 34 are cultural, 7 are natural, 1 is mixed. Let us see about the UNESCO. UNESCO established in 1945, Paris, member countries, 195, and India is among the founding member of the UNESCO, specialized agency of the UNO, and the parent organization is United Nations Economic and Social Council, popularly known as UN ECOSOC, United Nations Economic and Social Council. This you have to remember. There is a parent organization. And here is a list of the cultural sites of UNESCO and the natural sites and the mixed site also I included in this list. Mixed one is, like I said earlier, Kanchenjunga National Park present in Sikkim. Next, third topic is related to Prime Minister Vishwakarma. Prime Minister Vishwakarma Yojana. This is related to what? Artisans who are expert in skill. And one more thing you have to remember, this scheme is central sector scheme. That means 100% funding is coming from the union government. It is operating by MSME, Nodal Ministry is Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Industries. They are operating this. How many different categories of artisans are going to be benefited? Around 18 categories of artisans, they are going to be benefited. If you remember, the 18, we are having the biosphere reserves. How many biosphere reserves present in India? 18. This you have to remember. It is all about upping the skill of the artisans. And it also gives certification also to the artisans so that their self-employment employability opportunities will be improved and the living, the way of living also will be improved, quality of life. And in this one more thing, without providing any collateral security, loan will be given. You must remember, collateral security means when you are taking loan from bank, you have to provide certain property as a security. Regarding this, it don't require. Let's see PM Vishwakarma scheme. Central sector, 18 categories, objective, 
to improve the skill among the artisans and craft persons nodal ministry msme components skill training industry loans and the expected beneficiaries craftsmen as well as the artisans how many families according to the government estimation 30 lakh families are going to be benefited through this scheme next next topic is about the you know like mithun mithun is very close to indian gaur okay it's a kind of very close relative to buffalo and it gives milk also it is a cultural animal which is mainly located in the northeast and parts of the bangladesh and myanmar now it got a special status or special you know like identity it identified as food animal it refers to an animal species which can be raised and utilized for the human consumption as food this certification is given by fwsai and one more thing it is not belong to the cow otherwise you know the people who are against the cow slaughtering they would have been protested it is not come under the category of cow there is a reason even though now fwsai even though it is identified this as a food animal not that much protest been evoked in this particular area it belongs to bovidae family this is known as mithun and its category vulnerable category and under that is according to iucn and as sites it come under the appendix 1 let's see it present in northeast area food animal who given this fwsai fwsai stands for food safety and standards authority of india you have to remember this fwsai is a statutory body that means it established by making a law in the parliament and this mithul or gayal descendant of the indian gaur or indian bison socio economic and cultural it is related to following tribes that means in the particular following tribes they even worship it as a you know like cultural significance which tribes they are like niyushu tribe apatani gyalau adi which are present in arunachal pradesh if you look at here distribution present in northeast bangladesh myanmar and china probably known as cattle of mountain at the state animal of arunachal pradesh and nagaland very important in nagaland very popular hornbill festival is also very popular in nagaland and the indian council of agriculture research icar it developed a particular app also which brings both buyers and sellers of this particular animal that app name is em entra okay this is the app where this mithun farmers they can register and it coordinate the buyers and sellers category iucn category vulnerable sites appendix 1 fwsa statutory body which is established according to the act which was made in 2006 and this fwsai it comes under the ministry of health and family welfare that is what you have to understand here next topic this is related to polity and here few people they are challenging the constitutional validity of section 6a present in the indian citizenship act 1955 remember this issue is only related to assam not related to rest of the india and this section is particularly it is deal with the citizenship rights to the people who entered into india from bangladesh between 1966 to 1971 and this particular provision was added with the result of the assam accord which was made in 1985 most of these accords in northeast they were made during the rajiv gandhi time that also you have to remember here okay now let's see here yes, supreme court they agreed that they are going to check the constitutionality of the section 6a and it is added to the constitution i mean it is added to the citizenship act as a result of the assam accord which was made in 1985 the result of assam movement this particular section is present in which act citizenship act 1955 you know that recently citizenship act was amended and lot of protest were also as a result of that that is in the, that is in the form of caa protest you know that before the covid and of course uh, it also witnessed some protest in jnu also this one is going to protect i mean protect the rights of the people who entered into assam between 1966 to 1971 like i said earlier they were given the citizenship rights and of course there are few groups which are supporting this section also mainly union government government of india is supporting that this is constitutionally valid let's see what supreme court will tell 
you must remember that students any constitutional interpretation requires the formation of constitutional bench and what is the strength of the constitutional bench put your answer in the comments okay next this particular topic is related to international relations and is going to be the sixth topic in our weekly current issues here this particular issue is between the armenia and azerbaijan you have to remember and this particular region this region is known as nagorno karabakh it is present in azerbaijan and traditionally this region is mainly occupied by the people who are speaking the armenian language and they themselves identified with the armenian ethnicity and they are demanding that the region must be merged with the armenia now why we are discussing this the separatists who are demanding that this region should be joined with armenia those separatists now they surrendered but let's see what are the repercussions whether this whether again there will there might be violence in future or not we will see but anyhow first as a basic thing you have to know arm this nagorno karabakh means it is present between these two regions and this particular these two countries are generally present between the caspian sea and black sea and this region is very near to caucasus mountains let us see where are this caucasus mountains are present this is about greater caucasus mountains generally this caucasus mountains generally considered as a natural barrier between the europe and asia so here you, you can find here azerbaijan here you can find the azerbaijan as beside to this you'll find armenia so why it is in news this armenian separatists who are operating mainly in nagorno karabakh region which is present the south caucasus they surrendered and this nagorno karabakh region it lies south caucasus region present between the black sea and the caspian sea it is present between these two regions and this war in this nagorno karabakh region is not new it started in 1980s and now it extended till 1990s even russia is also sent their peacekeeping force to mediate the deal between these two countries okay now they surrendered let's see how long it is going to be there lot of you know like conflict happened in 1994 and still this conflict is going on next the last topic is sardar sarovar dam actually this dam is resulted to narmada river due to heavy rainfall in the narmada river basin now the narmada river is overflowing and without any proper intimation the authorities they released water from the sardar sarovar dam because of that the people who are living in low lying areas they subjected to floods and this sardar sarovar dam is one of the largest concrete built dam in india third largest in terms of height let's see further details severe rains in gujarat caused namada river to of flood and people are i mean some reports are coming that it is due to the delayed response of the authorities sardar sarovar dam it is present it is built on namada river it opened in 2017 is a concrete gravity dam concrete gravity dam third highest in india La highest one is bakranangal present in himachal pradesh second one is lakwar present in up and in terms of the amount of concrete used it is the second the largest dam in terms of amount of concrete used the largest dam which used the high amount of concrete it was grand schooli dam in usa so this sardar sarovar dam it is benefiting to states gujarat madhya pradesh and maharashtra and rajasthan mainly madhya pradesh maharashtra and gujarat they share the benefits in the ratio of 57 27 16 least benefit is gujarat in middle maharashtra and highest benefit is madhya pradesh let's see namada river course namada river in fact it is a west flowing river normally majority of the rivers in india they are the east flowing in nature you must remember and this narmada starts in amarkantak region in madhya pradesh maikal range then which base in madhya pradesh maharashtra and gujarat in between vindhya and satpura mountain base in, in between that mountains in these states this river flows and it drains into arabian sea it flows for 1312 kilometers famous waterfalls duwandar waterfalls which located in the near to Jab- jabalpur major tributaries 
Tava, Hiran, and Orsang rivers. These are the major tributaries. A study video question. One of the implications of equality in society is the absence of what? Is the absence of privilege. Very near to abolition of titles, Article 18. Let's see. Consider the following statement regarding the Gandhi Sagar Wildlife Sanctuary. Check these two statements and pick your right answer. Next question. Which one of the following is the best description of Samudra Prahari? Which describes Samudra Prahari means? Next one. Barak tank recently seen in news was developed by developed by which country? Barak. You must resemble that with the Barak missiles. Simbex is a bilateral navy exercise conducted between India and which country? Simbex. Next. What is the primary objective of Operation Sazag? What is the primary objective? Okay, as we reach to the end of this video, just we will relook at what topics we covered in this video. In this week 9 current issues topic video, we covered all these 7 topics from various subjects. I hope this video useful to you and this is the detailed analysis regarding the weekly current issues.